All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys how we can encrypt or not encrypt or, or hash our passwords. So password hashing is very common. You want to do this because you don't want to save raw passwords in your database. So it's very important that you hash every single one of your passwords. OK, um, so one thing to note with hashing is that once you hash something, you cannot uh, get the value of the hash back. OK, so it's very different with than, than encryption. When you encrypt something, you can decrypt it using the correct key. Okay, when hash, when you hash something, you cannot get the value back. So passwords are a good example of something that you want to hash because you don't want the users to be able to like you know unhash their passwords and get the actual value back. Uh, instead, what you do is you hash the password, and the next time the user provides their password when they're trying to log in, uh, you take the password they're providing and then you hash that password and you compare the hashes. So you compare the hash from the user's entered password with the hash that, the, that is saved in the database. If they're the same, then that means the user is who they say they are. If they're not, then that means they provide the wrong password. Okay, so what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and install a package called bcrypt. So I'll do that real quick. So we'll do yarn add bcrypt. And then uh, let's install that. Okay, so that should uh, install bcrypt for us. And then we'll also install the types as well. So bcrypt. Okay, so that should do the trick. All right, cool. Uh, what's going on? Oh, whoops. Let's see what All right, awesome. So now that we have installed bcrypt, all we got to do is we just got to create a function that's going to take care of hashing everything for us. So. Uh, you can create a bcrypt service if you want. If you want, you can create like a module that is that is going to have like a bunch of global or shared services. I'm not going to do that though. What I'll do is I'll just create a folder called utils and I'll just create a file called bcrypt.ts. And what I'll do is I'll just import as bcrypt from bcrypt. Uh, and also, if you want to use bcrypt.js, there's also bcrypt.js as well. So if you don't like bcrypt, you can also use bcrypt.js, but we'll just use uh, bcrypt. There's probably, there's there's definitely going to be some differences, but um, we'll just use, we'll just stick with bcrypt for now. Okay, at least that's what awesomeness.js recommends too, on the documentation anyways. Uh, anyways, so uh, what, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, create a function called encode password. And we'll take in the password. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's see. So we'll go ahead and I think what we'll do is we'll label this as an async function. And if you want, you can generate a salt if you want to, or you can just use like a, you can use the same salt over and over again. Um, so what I'll do is for now, just for demonstration purposes, I'll just go ahead and Oops. I just declare a salt with value 10 and then we will just return bcrypt hash so we're going to pass in the raw password and then we're going to pass in the salt okay so this should hash it for us and then it should return it okay if you want to generate a salt you can definitely do that you could do const salt and you can do bcrypt gen salt sync so i'll do that asynchronously and you can pass that salt there and you don't have to use that okay so uh that should be uh that should be it uh so yeah th this should be fine let's go into controllers okay so we're going to reuse this create endpoint so whenever we create a user we're going to save the user to the database, but before we save it to the database, we want to make sure we actually encrypt the pass or uh, hash the password. So when we save the user to the database, that happens in the user service. So we'll go to that class and right down here, create user. Right before we call this create user DTO, what we'll do is um, I'll actually just, I think I should be able to actually just change the value of the password um i don't know if this is really like good practice or not because either either way if we don't change the password 
um essentially what's going to happen is we're just going to we're just going to have to pass in password and the structure create user detail or we're or when my bad it's the other way around we're gonna have to destructure create user detail and then pass in the password just like that um it's it's you know, like i said i think i think it's better if we just instead of modifying the object itself i think it's better if we just uh leave it alone and then just override the password property so encode password whoops And then we'll pass in create user detail password. Okay, so what's going on over here? Oh, why is it saying password promised? Oh, whoops. I need to await this. Is there a uh, is there a method called hash sync? Yeah, I'll just do synchronous. So this should return a string. Oh wait, let's remove that async. There we go. Perfect. So this should return a string, and I'll also log it just show you guys how that works okay so essentially what i'm doing here is i'm destructuring so i'm basically unpacking all the values that are coming from the dto and so it'll, it'll it'll basically unpack everything including the password but at the very end we're going to override the password that was already set because objects can only have uh one key one unique key right it can only have unique well, i'm sorry let me phrase that objects can only have unique keys okay and since we are uh, passing password again, it's just going to give us the latest value that we set. So that'll give us the actual hash. So that way we don't actually modify the DTO just because we we, we want to avoid performing like like any any mutations on objects that really should not be mutated. Uh, so that way we still have the original uh, copy of the DTO itself. Okay, I mean, you can if you want to, but um, I'm not going to. Anyway, so let's go ahead and click send, and you can see right over here, we get back the password, okay? Um, and you can see that in the console, it's being logged, and in the database, you can see that uh, the passwords are there. Okay, so that's cool. So now that every single time we create a new user, it will always uh, hash the password. Now, when we log in, we need to make sure that we are uh, comparing the passwords. So it's very easy. So if you watched the last video on how to set up authentication, um, you should already have all this code set up already. All we need to do is right over here inside the auth service where we are comparing the passwords right over here. Uh, I'm actually gonna get rid of this. So if the user was found, what we'll do is we will compare passwords. So I'll actually go back into bcrypt.ts and I'll do export function compare passwords so this will take in um the uh let's see the raw password so that's the password the user is going to enter in the form or uh, if they're you know providing that as as like inside the request payload and then we need the hash which is also going to be of type string as well and then what we want to do is we want to return bcrypt uh compare sync Okay, and uh, what we'll do is we will simply just do password, whoops, hash. And I think the third parameter, is the third parameter a callback function? No, it's not, okay. All right, that's fine. There's no callback functions, okay, good. All right, that's fine. So compare, we'll compare the raw password with the hash. Cool. So right over here, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and call const match and we'll just simply call compare passwords and we'll pass in the password the user entered as well as the user DB's password or the password that's from the user database record. Okay. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just simply say uh, if matched, then we will simply return this and if there was no match we can just simply uh i'll, I'll do a console log i'll just say password do not match and i'll just return null so similar to how we have return null down here um and that should cover that case so let's go ahead and try to log in now so it's going to be slash api slash auth slash login 
Uh, so for the request body, we'll pass in. So uh, in the last video, before we ended the video, I actually changed the strategy uh, to pick up the default name as email. I'm going to change that back to username. Just so, to, just so that we don't have to keep changing so many things. Because right now, the validate user uh, gets the user by username. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and try this out. So username, style123. And the password was this. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that out. So you can see that it says 201 created. So it seems like... Uh, user validation success. Now what happens if I pass in a wrong password, it gives us a 401 unauthorized. And you can see in the logs, it says passwords do not match. So right now we're comparing the passwords and it's working the way that we expected. Okay, so now in our application, every single time we create a new account, our passwords are gonna be hashed. And every single time we log in, it's going to compare the hash. Whereas before in the last video, we only did a simple demonstration of how to set up authentication. And we were not comparing the hash. In the real application, you want to make sure you are hashing passwords. Okay? So that is going to be pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.